Yo. So no intro for this video, I know a little bit weird. The reason for that, of course, is because YouTube decided to copyright the music in it, even though it was no copyright music. So a little bit flip-flop on their side of things, but the reason it's not in this video is because it just felt a little wrong to put it in a video without the original music, and it did feel a little bit weird in the previous two videos, putting it out without having the original sounds. Regardless, I'm working to get that fixed, so keep an eye out. So today's video is going to be a brand new video on the top five most overrated investments, and I actually got this idea for this video from somebody in in real life that doesn't even really play CSGO all that much, so shout out to him for giving me the idea for this video, pretty cool. I think it's a pretty cool idea and I did want to talk about some of these items that I do definitely think were very overhyped in terms of their investment potential, so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. But before that, let's check out the sponsor for today's video. The sponsor for today's video is going to be Skinport. So Skinport is of course one of the best third party marketplace sites that you can use to buy skins for investing purposes or just for showing off in your silver matchmaking games, even though you could of course get vac banned as of the recent wave. Regardless, the skins on the sites are very good looking and will definitely make those people in silver drool. They have over a hundred thousand items on the site and you can actually support my channel by using my affiliate link in the description below and that's actually going to directly give back to me for all this great advice that I'm giving you. They also feature definitely the best UI of any third party marketplace out there so it's definitely a great one to check out and it's going to make your skin buying experience very smooth. So if you want to check them out be sure to use the link in the description below and let's get into this video. So the top five most overrated items in CSGO. So obviously, disclaimer, anything can change with time. Valve can implement new updates, which can make these overrated investments actually become good investments. And of course, Valve can also make updates to make these even worse items than they already are. So of course, there is a big potential factor for any of the items that we're talking about, but I do want to talk about these just because of their hype and then subsequent fall after their hype was too high. So the number five spot for this list is going to be the SSG-08 Acid Fade. This is a really cool skin with a really nice pattern. It's definitely one that I've liked for a very long time, but unfortunately it's not a great investment, and the reason it was actually hyped up so high is because it has a very interesting float range to where it's really easy to get these items with a double zero float, for example. So the outcome of what you use this for in a trade-up is going do subsequently have a pretty low float as well. Now the reason floats are important is because extremely low floats can actually garner a lot of overpay on their items. So when you use the SSG Acid Fade to trade up for a restricted item, not only are you using a very good input because you can kind of weigh the odds in your favor given the new theory of CSGO trade-ups, but the other really nice thing is you can also weigh the float in your favor by giving a very low float output due to the fact that you're using SSG Acid Fades. Like I said, these are very common to find in double zero floats and even triple zero floats, even just on the regular Steam Marketplace, so they're pretty easy to get and use for restricted trade-ups. There's an example up on your screen right now of how the SSG Acid Fade works in terms of trade-ups and how it can give you a really cool outcome given the way that the new theory of trade-ups works. The issue with this, of course, is that this isn't really a good reason to maintain a higher price because this is going to be used as a fodder input anyway, and the thing that you're gonna get out of the SSG Acid Fade as part of the trade-up is going to just be the M4A1S Nitro, which is not really something you want to get out of a trade-up. So as a result, the item is just trade up fodder and can't really maintain a high price despite having a really cool float factor. It's just going to be a good item to use when people do decide to do restricted trade ups. Anytime a good restricted trade up comes out, like for example the recent Operation Shuttered Web trade ups that you could do in the restricted condition, there is going to be a slight amount of hype for stuff like the Acid Fade and other blue inputs that only have one purple output because of the way that the new theory of trade ups works. And if you want a better explanation of that, there's a lot of other videos on YouTube, so you can go check those out. Anyway, moving on to the number four spot for this list, it's going to be the X-ray package and by extension the P250 X-ray. These were hyped up like crazy because a really cool thing about them was that you could get them in genuine condition originally. Now a genuine condition item is pretty rare to see in CSGO and you really only see it on pins, so seeing this on an item itself was really really cool and definitely something that a lot of people got hyped up for. Unfortunately this was not going to carry over into live servers and the P250 X-rays that were actually available on the market did not come in genuine condition, only in stat track. Another really unfortunate thing for this item is that it had a fixed price because the issue is that the package itself was actually available in the CSGO item store after its release and from up until now even. So the price for this item is very fixed and can't really move too much as people aren't going to pay more on the marketplace for an item they can get in game for its fixed price. Because of initial hype for this item since it was so unique and weird, there was a lot of people buying into this and shooting its price up like crazy, but unfortunately they did not carry over and because the fixed price of the package was a big factor, the item could not really carry over with a high price and is unfortunately sitting at a pretty fixed price right now. Even the Stat Track Factory 
new P250 X-Ray is still not doing all that great, which is unfortunate for people who decided to buy into them. Not really much else to say here, it's mainly just the whole fixed price thing. Because the item is infinitely available at a fixed price, it's not really going to go higher than that price. That said, let's go ahead and move on to the number three spot for this list, which is going to be, surprisingly enough, the Shutter Web Case. So, the Shutter Web Case is a very weird one, and I don't really want to call it overrated, but it kind of does fall into that category, and here's why. So I'm not saying that the Shutter Web case is no longer a good investment, I'm not saying it's dead. It's definitely not dead, it has a long way to go in the future. But, I do want to bring up a very important factor that does contribute to the fact that it can be considered overhyped. So when the Shutter Web case initially came out, obviously a really cool thing about it was that it was an operation case, so a lot of people got very hyped for it because it was very similar to the Hydra case, which did very very good as an investment. However, one interesting thing about the Shutter Web case that set it apart from the Hydra case was that it had exclusive knives in it, like the Skeleton Knives and the Nomad Knives for example, and that actually made its price very very stable and solid because it had a unique set of knives that you couldn't get anywhere else. This also caused the knives to go up like crazy as well, and on sites like Buff they were just going for absolutely exorbitant prices, nothing that had ever been seen before for any case in any form of knife, so it was very very high, and the Shadow Web case itself also followed the same kind of idea. Its quantity was also kind of low, which was to be expected because obviously people would only be able to get them from drops in the operation, and then they would only be able to be sold, and then not really replenished as they're not in the drop pool. And when the Prisma 2 case came out, the hype really shot up for the Shadow Web case as the knife Knives or skins were not re-released in any way, shape, or form, so that kind of increased a lot of confidence for people using the Shadow Web case as an investment. Unfortunately, though, one major factor was overlooked, and this is actually a factor that I brought up in this video that you see on screen right now, and that's the fact that the Shadow Web case had exclusive knives, which was not going to be a thing that carried over. Unfortunately, because it featured a bunch of different types of knives, like Paracord and Skeleton for example, it was very odd for CSGO to keep these exclusive to the Shadow Web case, and there was a very glaring hole in the market as a whole, just because of these knives being exclusive to the Shadow Web case, which did not make any sense. In the discussions that I've had with people in the community at least, I was pretty much one of the only people really out there saying that this was going to be a very odd thing, and that there was a very high chance of the knives being re-released in a future case, but unfortunately a lot of people didn't really share that same idea and they went ahead and bought into the Shadow Web case like crazy. And for a while, the item was actually a very good investment. Shot up to around $3.50 and then pulled back a little bit, but still really good signs and really good signs for the future as well. Unfortunately, one glaring issue was the fact that these knives could be re-released at any time in any case and could drop the price of the Shadow Web case significantly. And it actually ended up happening as of recent with the Fracture case as it re-released all of the Shadow Web knives in their original finishes. So you're actually not going to exclusively be able to get the knives from the Shadow Web case itself and you are now able to get them from the Fracture case. This of course caused a huge drop and a huge panic in the Shadow Web case prices and then a little bit of a rise after people decided that the panic wasn't really all that was worth it. Now the thing about the Shadow Web case is that for the future the prospects still look very good. It does have exclusive skins in it that you can't get anywhere else and it is an item that's not really going to be replenished into the drop pool anytime soon so it's going to be a really solid option just to hold on to. If you held through the panic selling then you're still good to go. You just have to wait for the item to recover and inevitably will. That's why I didn't really want to include it on the overhyped list, but unfortunately because it did have that glaring factor of the re-release of knives that a lot of people weren't taking into account, it does unfortunately temporarily fall into the overhyped category. Just to clarify for those of you that aren't listening closely enough, it is not a dead item, it still has a very good opportunity to rise in the future, you just have to hold on to it. The skins inside of it are still exclusive and that still bodes well for its price. The number two spot for this list is going to go to the P250 Mendy and by extension also the M4A4 Griffin and any other skin that people thought was going to go contraband. So the concept of contrabands in CSGO has been a hot topic for pretty much since the Howl was released. Contraband items are basically these gold rare items that you can only obtain very rarely in the forms of anything relating to the M484 Howl except for the pin and these become very very sought after because they are at their own tier of rarity which is really really cool. Unfortunately, they're pretty bad investments because people don't really understand how contraband works. With the M4A4 Howl, the story is a little bit different because in the old days of CSGO, the dev team wasn't really sure of how to handle things, so they ended up making the item contraband and changing the artwork on it. This obviously did not carry over to future developments as the Griffin and the Mendy both sort of had their artwork changed as they were sort of stolen. Now the Mendy itself I don't actually believe had its artwork changed, the Griffin did have its artwork changed though, which is why it's not actually contraband and it's still available in all these cases in all of its forms, 
and actually didn't get the contraband treatment. It seems like almost every year people point out a stolen artwork and try to get the item to go contraband, but it almost never happens, and it probably will never happen in the future as well, and if it does, I would be very, very surprised as they've sort of changed their whole stigma on these development processes of changing the artwork of skins. So for the time being, and probably the rest of CSGO's inevitable history, the M4A4 Howl is going to remain the only contraband item in the game that is actually a skin. But who knows, maybe CSGO will update something or change one of their ideas and make a whole bunch of stuff contraband, so the rumors are going to continue. Now, in terms of investment potential, I do want to point out that when these items are hyped up as potential contrabands, even though they really never will be, the items do skyrocket in price quite a lot and then drop back down. That's the curse of rumors, don't listen to them. The number one spot for this list is going to go to probably the most overhyped concept ever, and that is going to be normal mapping. So normal mapping a skin is basically where they take a skin that looks very flat and metallic and turn it into a sort of a 3D effect. This happened with a few different skins like the AK-47 Redline and the M4A1S Basilisk. When the M4A1S Basilisk first released, there was a huge amount of hype behind it because people thought it was going to be like the only only normal map skin and it was going to be huge because it was going to change everything. Normal mapping was a new concept at the time and it did change a lot of skins very drastically so people thought it was going to bode well for them as investments. There was obviously a lot of hype and these items did skyrocket quite a bit but did not hold their prices and at the rate they are currently at have pretty much just gone back to their normal prices before they were normal mapped which is sort of ironic. Nowadays because these items are going to be normal mapped like crazy and a lot of the older items in CSGO are going to get updated normal maps it's not really a topic of discussion anymore which is the main reason for hype behind them. So really the number one spot for this list can go to the concept of normal mapping as a whole instead of just normal map skins themselves. Anyway guys that's going to cut it for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did be sure to leave a like on the video and of course consider subscribing to the channel because I would really appreciate it and a lot of people would be very benefited by making sure that you're getting my videos in your recommended section. Seriously subscribe to the channel please 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 also be sure to check out my skin port link and also the links to my other social medias in the description below and thank you guys for checking out this video. I'll see you all next time. Peace.